So let's talk about something else that might be jerking us around. And that, of course, is Louis C.K. Louis C.K. Uh, has come back in to uh, everyone's attention tonight. And it's a very interesting conversation to be had because, remember, a number of years ago, Louis C.K. was canceled for um, admitting to masturbating in front of women. And, uh, you know, I believe he claims that they he had asked permission and they had not really said no, as far as I understand it. Um, but uh, it ended up coming out. He admitted to it and he kind of he kind of lost everything. But tonight, tonight, he's kind of back on top uh, because Louis C.K. wins Grammy for comedy album and uh, where he addresses his sexual misconduct claims. So he put out an album called Sincerely Louis C.K., which was his first special since 2017, and it ended up winning him a Grammy. And a lot of people, a lot of people are fucking furious at this. Saying here, Louis C.K.'s 2020 comedy special in which he joked about the sexual misconduct claims against him has won the award for best comedy album at the 2022 Grammys. Sincerely Louis C.K., the disgraced comedian's first special since 2017, the same year, the first of several accusations of sexual misconduct were made against him, was nominated alongside Lavelle Crawford's The Comedy uh, Vaccine, Chelsea Handler's Evolution, Louis Black's Thanks for Risking Your Life, and Nate Barsgate's The Greatest Average American, and Kevin Hart's Zero Fucks Given. Um, I mean, honestly, Louis Black, I would have put against Louis C.K. a number of years ago, but I think he's fallen off in recent years. I mean, that's just age. That's just age. I'm not being ageist. It's just he's not the same as he was in, like, you know, the mid-2000s. In the special, CK addresses the allegations, including experience of going out in public after they came to light. Back in 2017, during the early days of the Me Too movement, at least five women made allegations against the comedian, including charges that he masturbated in front of them and fellow comedians. And he's admitted this. He's admitted this. And it was one of those things where it's like, oh, wow, uh, you know, you don't really expect that. Now, I've heard people I know who kind of run in the comedy sphere have talked a little bit about this as time has gone on. But uh, anyway, it goes on to say that the controversy resulted in him losing multiple TV and film deals after studios and networks, including FX, Netflix, and Universal cut ties with him. He admitted to the allegations, which are first published in the New York Times, and a statement writing, these stories are true. CK made multiple comeback attempts in 2018 with a handful of performances at the Comedy Cellar, though they were met by in-person protests and social media backlash. In August 2021, uh, CK announced a 30-city comedy tour. He announced a 30-city comedy tour, generally not in the United States. All right. Like, I mean, you know, it's it's definitely one of those things where like he and I, what I love about this here is they said that he had multiple comeback attempts in 2018. What he did when those failed is, and this is what they're not going to talk about, what they're, what they're not going to talk about is, is, and I'm going to probably catch flack for saying this, but the sheer utter brilliance of what led Louis C.K. back to this moment. Now, I'm not, I'm not condoning uh, what he did. He has apologized. That is between him and those people. That is something wrong. You should never have done it. But again, it's like, do you know, is he is he never once again allowed to make any jokes? Is he never allowed again to say anything? That, of course, is the issue. But um, the whole point is this is what Louis C.K. did back in 2018. There was he was doing uh, trying to do smaller shows. And at one point, one of his entire sets got leaked out. Now, I think this might have been done on purpose. I think this was done on purpose. It leaked out and it was funny. And a lot of people listened to it. A lot of people downloaded it. A lot of people listened to it and very covertly, very on the hush hush because you couldn't publicly support Louis CK at the time. And you probably can't even now, but back then people were listening. It was all over YouTube. It was all over Twitter. People were like really laughing at it and it was like getting people's attention. So what did Louis CK do? He started performing at more smaller shows, workshopping material, things along those lines. What you don't then when he did the sincerely Louis C.K., he put out the special. He paid for it himself. He produced it himself. He paid for it himself. So there was no control. There was there was no control in regards to that. He ended up having his own his own say in the whole situation. So he basically uh, went around the studio system. He ran. He went around the whole the whole thing. And just did it, used his celebrity, used his popularity and rebuilt his fan base 
uh, on that particular front. And then that's when he put out that sincerely uh, Louis C.K. comedy special and he sold it directly on his website, which here's the thing with that, too. He had been doing that before before he was canceled. He was selling his comedy albums for like uh, pittance on his website. Because he knew that he would probably, he would get more money from selling out shows. So he did these comedy albums and he would release them for like five, 10 bucks or whatever on his website, people would buy it. And that's how he built up a very direct to, you know, direct mail marketing uh, or direct mailing list with his dedicated fans that guess what? Maybe publicly didn't support him, but privately they were still paying for this stuff. And as a result of that, he has now been able to come back out. And actually push this stuff in a way that has now led him to getting a Grammy, getting a Grammy. And obviously it is pissing people off on social media. It is angering people on social media. It is, uh, this is going to be a big ass fucking thing because it does raise the question, uh, is, you know, Louis CK uncancelable? And it's not that he's uncancelable. I think we should make that abundantly clear. I think we should make that abundantly clear. It wasn't like he was canceled. What happened with Louis C.K. is he never let himself be canceled. That's the other side of this, too, is when you get canceled, it's how you react to it that is uh, is going to be a thing. Because a lot of people out there are never going to, like, let you live down your mistakes. It doesn't matter what it is, you know, like it doesn't matter what it is. There are people out there who are always going to lord those mistakes over your head. It doesn't matter. And it all depends on what you do with it. No one is going to stop Louis C.K. from having a fan base. No one's going to stop Louis C.K. from selling out shows himself. Now, is he more affluent and more privileged than other people in that situation? Dude, 150,000 fucking percent. But he played it in a way that is doing it outside of areas that the mob that hates him has any kind of control in. Because he keeps it all hush-hush. He keeps it all on the down low. And his fans still come out and they still see it. Now, will this allow for him to come back into the fold and will this allow for Louis C.K. to, you know, start like selling out Madison Square Garden again? I mean, the whole thing here is like, you know, (laughs) I don't know. I I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but obviously there was there's enough of a of a love for this album. There's enough of of a of a base for this album that he could go on a 20 city, uh, you know, North American tour. And sell out big ass clubs again. And guess what? If there's protesters at this point, it might be the best thing for him for free advertising. You know, I mean, there is a thing to be said about countering what you might call like woke activism. And I don't think criticizing Louis CK for jerking off in front of women is woke activism. Right. I think like he did it and he should be criticized for it because if he put people in the position to where they didn't feel like they could say no, then that's not right. He shouldn't have done that. That was a bad thing. But at the end of the day, it's like, still, it's been a number of years. If he's apologized and he's made amends, I don't know if he has, I don't, I can't speak to that, but does that even really matter to his fan base? Because his fan base clearly is still there and his fan base is still making him a shitload of money. And at the end of the day, to many people in the industry, that's all that really matters. So if someone can, uh, if a promoter can bring him on and book a tour and they can make millions upon millions of dollars on that tour. Guess who the fuck is going on tour? Louis C.K. It may not be here in the States, right? Because even though at the beginning of the uh, Ukrainian uh, war, he actually was supposed to play in Kiev. And as far as I know, he didn't cancel. I don't know. I don't think he actually played, but he didn't cancel it. And that was that was a story that popped up a couple of weeks ago. It was kind of quick and a quick little blurb. And then it went away. But I mean, obviously, he's got fans the world over and those fans will show up. Potentially even in wartime, <laughs> I could just imagine president Zelensky of the Ukraine contacting uh, Louis CK and asking him to come and put on like a you know, USO show. Uh, I don't know. That could be a, that would be a hell of a special. 